Hey guys, hey, hey, how's it going? Just get my nail nice and steamy hot here so I can take a nice quick little ninja dab. I saw this online, thought it was pretty cool. You you load one dab up and then you get another another completely different dab ready. And after it's all ready, you take both of them basically at the same time. So here we go. Everybody, thank you for joining me. <coughs> oh, that was a great ninja dad. Oh man. <coughs> so I found a story and I decided to talk to you guys today about basically the police and social media. Even today, police are still using social media to bust users of marijuana or to try to weed out the black market cartel, as they say it. A recent Denver News investigation found that Denver police are posing as large, growing operations on social media platforms in order to bust anyone suspected of drug trafficking. <laughs> Those of you who watch my show, I'm sure you've all seen it. If you uh, clicked on one of my links from one of the High Times comments or whatever, that that's basically what you've seen throughout the, all those comments is, is medical grade marijuana for sale and blah, 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 and come click on my link and here's my phone number, give me a call. Most of those are actually police officers posing as medical marijuana so that you'd say hey let me how many pounds can i get from you after you start talking pounds with these people then they go "Ooh, we got ourselves a big guy which was the case for a uh, 26 year old man he basically fell for one of these schemes and he was said to be purchasing about 36 pounds of marijuana, which was a worth of $64,000 worth of weed. Now, granted, why do you need to buy that much unless you own a dispensary and are planning on supplying that dispensary? For one. For two, why are police officers trying to bust these people? These people will eventually be weeded out by legalization. So do we really need to spend our time trying to weed them out? I mean, if we actually are staying true to legalization, these people could be weeded out by simply somebody like me saying, hey, I know this guy over here, or one of the clinics going, I have this guy that constantly comes in all the time picking up ounces daily. These schemes seem like entrapment. But after a small amount of investigation by the police, they are still very legal. So basically, the law enforcement is allowed to tell you lies. They're allowed to lie to you and tell you anything they want to tell you in order for you to feel like you need to go to them for purchasing marijuana. The only thing they can't do... Ooh, I'm blowing out smoke. The only thing the police officers can't do is corks you into purchasing marijuana. They can't play a sympathy card. They have to be able to prove that you were already, before dealing with them, willing to purchase that marijuana to begin with. That's why they just pose, hey, we're a large growing operation here and blah, 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 and we're looking to get rid of large amounts real fast. Well, I'm sure dispensaries don't need these people, so who are they advertising for? So you can go ahead and, if you ever see those ads on those sites, 
spam the hell out of them and go, go away, police officer. We don't want you. I want all you guys to go to the High Times website, go through their comments, and any ad advertising for marijuana sales, I want you to shout out that they are police officers. Can't trust anybody on the webs on the webs now anymore. Those interwebs are dangerous places to be. Oh, my dad was actually a pretty good dad. I don't feel it. Feel like that commercial. The girl's just melting, melting. You were so much cooler when you didn't smoke weed. How the heck do they know? They're only 13. They haven't even started to become cool yet. <coughs> but that's just one of the ways the police officers are busting people still. Another way, a SWAT raid on a tomatoes. So, in 2012, the story goes, in 2012, a, a couple from Kansas had their house raided and their family held at gunpoint over suspicion they were growing marijuana. What the what a end up what they ended up finding out after you know holding them all at gunpoint, investigating the house and everything, was the 13 year old had a school project to grow tomatoes. They decided on, but they he could have probably grown anything, but you know he could have grown tomatoes, flowers, or fruits or. You know, almost anything. Fruits, flowers, vegetables. But he decided tomatoes. Or maybe in the family decided together. Who knows? The couple went to a local gardening shop and bought a hydroponic kit for growing. Well, who would it? it honestly, gr tomatoes grow the best in hydroponics. Even strawberries grow pretty good that way. After after a not-so-thorough investigation, police proceeded to knock down the door only to hold the family at a gunpoint and then find nothing. It turns out that the federal investigation has to, had to get involved into all of this to find out what actually happened. It turns out they found a bit of loose, loose leaf matter that they did a test on site and pronounced it positive for marijuana. It was dug out of their garbage. Well, let's see. There's all kinds of little loose stuff that you can find. I drink tea, coffee. Heck, you might even find marijuana loose leaf in my trash because I cook brownies and I throw all the stuff out afterwards. But it's all personal use. So after the invest, but remember, here is legal in California, Kansas. Not so much. After the investigation, basically the police were being tipped off by an informant or an investigator sitting inside the gardening shop parking lot. Uh, he would sit there and write down license plates of frequent visitors or what they bought or what they loaded up into their car. So after writing down these people's license plate, writing down that they bought a hydroponic kit, well, there you go. You must be growing marijuana right there. Uh, turns out that the they're both ex-CIA agents. Not actual agents. They just worked for the CIA. But yet, they were still under conviction of smoking marijuana or growing marijuana or trying to in their home. They found out after sending the loose leaf matter to, uh, to the actual lab instead of doing it on site that the loose, loose leaf matter was just loose tea. That was it. Uh, there was no marijuana on site. There was no marijuana paraphernalia. There was no signs of them even using prescription pills. So, it was literally a, a complete wasted bust. Ooh, I'm still blowing out smoke from the wax. But, after lots of investigation and and actual releasing releases, uh, they finally released information about the on-site testing of drugs and stuff, and it comes to find out that 
you can actually fake a positive on site. These police officers can actually turn around and introduce oxygen to the test and it would create a false positive. Uh, they actually tested stuff like candies and cookies and different things like that and, and got them to come up as cocaine, positive for cocaine, when they already knew it wasn't. So a lot of times what ends up happening, these officers were turning around and use and create this false positive in order to verify they can bust down a door and do what they have to do and say, this is to protect and serve you. Well, now you have a two couples that used to work for our government, does no longer trust our government, and their children will grow up the same way too. So does that really help us? Is that really helping people? by creating distrust in our society, distrust in our enforcement. I like, there's one meme I like that goes around, it sits there and says, says, ambulances sit and wait for something to happen. Fire trucks sit and wait for fires to happen. Why do police force go out constantly looking for something to happen? Well, it's kind of true. I mean, why do the police force have to pull us over and make something happen? A lot of times, some cops will actually just make something happen. I had a conversation with my dad yesterday. He was talking to me about the fact that I smoke and I go out and drive afterwards. Well, there maybe some cop might get a wild hair up his butt. Maybe he might decide to pull me and my girlfriend out of my car and, you know, search the car and pat us all down and do all that stuff and try to find us and give us a ticket. I smell constantly. I always smell like weed because I smoke. My whole house right now is filled with smoke. It happens. Yeah, my dog's down here underneath my feet. You guys can't see her. But she's been laying here this whole time. She's sitting here kind of sniffing a little bit. But that's basically all it is. You really can't say you can trust the police 100% and actually stand by that. Because honestly, how can you trust everybody? You really can't trust everybody. It's hard. I can't trust everybody. I wish I could. But honestly, we live in a world and society of liars. People who would rather lie to get their way and to appease themselves than to actually just be honest and face the truth, face the harsh realities or face whatever consequences may come their way. Unfortunately, we are going to have to face consequences. Everybody should. We should all face up to our consequences. It's a part of life. So, like I always tell you guys, educate before you medicate. Go ahead and get out of here. You all have a peaceful, positive, and productive day. Coming at you.